For assignment four, what we're going to do is look at designing the front forks that we're going to put on our flat tire mini bike. Well, the frame is clearly the most important part of this vehicle. It is also the most challenging and time consuming part of this project. So as I've thought about how we're going to proceed, I think it'd be really smart for us to work on designing the forks first of all. And I want to talk uh, in this lecture, I want to talk about that process. The size and shape of the forks are going to impact the design of the frame. So it's better to know what our forks are going to be like before we design the frame. I think it'll make the process a lot more efficient. Obviously, the forks are a really critical part of this vehicle. So I want everybody to understand what goes into the forks. It's actually a, it's a, kind of a common thing of any two-wheeled vehicle that's got front suspension. But it's good to understand what goes into it. It's a relatively complicated part. Uh, here's like a cutaway drawing or an exploded assembly of the parts that go into making the forks. As we go through this process and this design, um, we've talked about using commercial parts as well as manufactured parts that we're going to design. And you have to make the decision about are you going to buy stuff or are you going to make it. In this case, it's kind of a hybrid. Clearly, it, the suspension forks are relatively complicated. It'd be a very expensive, difficult project for us to design and manufacture our own. And they're relatively inexpensive to buy. So what we're going to do is uh, try to find some commercially available forks that would work for us. Unfortunately, I think because of our unique design, and that's primarily the size of the tires, you can't really buy an off-the-shelf fork set that would fit perfectly. So what we're going to do is we'll buy some commercial forks, and then we're going to modify them to fit our design. And they'll give us kind of the best of both worlds. Before you try to design some forks, obviously you need to understand the components that make up the fork. So I kind of broke this down into major parts. Uh, the fork legs would be the two pieces that go on either side of the tire and they're going to be connected to the top brackets. The top bracket is called a triple tree because it has those three holes in it, I think. Um, inside these fork legs, you've got hydraulic cylinders. So there's springs in here, hydraulic fluids and some valves, and that will allow the bottom part of the fork to move up and down and it give you some suspension as well as dampen the motion of the bike. The triple tree is the part the forks slide up through these holes here and they'd be clamped down on there and then this would be attached to your steering neck and, the steer and there's bearings on there for steering and then your handlebars would be attached to the top of that so again the fork legs go up in through here to create that assembly the triple tree brackets there's a top let's see the top is up here top and bottom and they're almost exactly the same in fact they could be exactly the same uh, and that's something we're going to have to work on with our design so the additional components for your forks, there's the handlebar risers. So the handlebar risers attach to the top of the triple trees and they'll be bolted through there with these bolts. And then the handlebars fit in here. So that attaches the handlebars to the triple trees. So in order to steer the vehicle, uh, this is a pretty critical part. Now the head tube is a tube that is mounted to the frame rails, will be welded to the frame rails. And that center pivot for the triple tree will go through there. The bearings go inside of this head, and that allows you to have nice, smooth steering. And also, it's a kind of a rigid attachment so that you don't want the front end to be wobbling. Inside of that tube are these head tube bearings. So there's a top and bottom bearing and a top and bottom race. The bearings are pretty much the same, I think, uh, on most in most situations. So you're going to have to design a head tube to put the bearings inside and also determine how you're going to attach that to the frame when you get to that point. Let's talk about the triple tree a little bit more. It is a critical part of the vehicle. It, as I said, it attaches the front forks to the steering neck, uh, and it consists of a top and bottom bracket. There's a center pivot shaft, and on that shaft are two bearings. And as I said earlier, those bearings then will go inside the head tube. And you can see on this diagram kind of this grayed out portion on the right that represents the head tube, and this has got some dimensions that you might be able to use for your design. You can use most of the components of the commercially available fork set, with the exception of the triple tree, uh, these brackets, so the top and bottom brackets. The problem is the spacing between the forks would not be wide enough to fit our wide tires inside. This is designed for like our kind of a smaller motorcycle tire. So what you're going to have to do is design some new brackets. So you can take the existing brackets and the dimensions on there and 
use the critical dimensions like the size of the holes for the tubes, the size for the center pivot, the size and location of those holes for the handlebar risers. But what you're going to do is change the center to center distance for those two holes to match the fat tires that we're going to be using. So what we'll do is design those and then we'll manufacture our own triple tree brackets, but we'll use the rest of the parts that come with the fork set. Obviously, there's different ways you can design the forks. I'll give you some recommendations that should make the process go kind of quickly. So what I would start by doing is gather whatever dimensions you can. And I've posted some information on Blackboard. If you want to do some, some of your own research, that's fine. But I, I don't have, other than what I posted on Blackboard, I don't have any additional information. So some of it you're just going to have to be creative with. So model the individual pieces, the front legs, the triple tree. Now remember, we're going to have to modify the triple tree. If you want, you can go ahead and draw up the existing one, create the assembly, and then figure out how much you want to change the dimensions on the triple tree, and then just go in and edit those parts. Uh, the triple tree pivot shaft, you'll need to make the handlebar risers, the steering neck, which you're going to have to design, and then also the bearings. And pay attention to these specific dimensions, diameter and length of the legs, diameter of the front axle mounts, the mounting holes for the handlebar risers, because you're going to make sure you can, when we make the new triple tree brackets, you got to make sure the handlebar risers will still attach to those. And also uh, diameter and location of any holes on the triple tree, like the handlebar risers. Now remember, we're not going to manufacture the whole fork assembly. We're just going to make the top and bottom plates. So everything doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but try to get something reasonably accurate so that It'll uh, have some value when you put it into your assembly. And here's a few tips that will help you with your design. I know some of this, it's, it's all new to you, so I want to make sure you're headed down the right path. Uh, some of the dimensions are missing. I, I don't know. I don't have these in my hand yet. Uh, what I'm doing is purchasing these um, forks. They're made for like little pit bikes, small motorcycles, and I think we can retrofit them to fit our bikes pretty pretty well and they're not real expensive or anything and there's a couple of different versions that you can choose from so take the dimensions that I've given you and some of those you're going to have to just make some assumptions on you know maybe the thickness of something or the size bolt or whatever just make some reasonable assumptions if, if need be we can go back and just edit the models that's not that difficult some of the parts for example bearings we don't need a perfect model of a bearing with all the moving parts and so forth we just need a simple model that we can place into our assembly, something that will that will um, replicate the true size and shape of the bearing, but we don't really care that it's a bearing. You, you can just use a solid cylindrical piece. Just make sure you have the right ODID and the thickness of the bearing, and that, that'll work just fine. And for the head tube, you're going to have to design that so that the triple tree fits in there and the bearings fit in there. And then we're going to use that when we build our frame. So we'll attach that to the frame. So that's going to be very helpful down the road. So once you have all of your models created, then what I want you to do is create a sub-assembly of the forks. So uh, I want you to make a sub-assembly of individual parts because we may need to change some of the dimensions and things like that. So we'll have the pieces that will be easy to edit. And remember, you're going to make your own triple tree design your own triple trees. So once you have all those pieces together, fork legs, triple tree, pivot shaft, the bearings, the front wheel, front tire, which you should already have, front axle, which I think you did something in the earlier assignment. You may have to edit that to now fit these forks. Uh, any spacers that you need to use uh, when you put the front wheel on there, you want to make sure that it stays center between the legs so you can create some spacers that slide onto the axle and that'll keep the wheel from moving back and forth axially. Uh, don't forget about the front wheel hubs that we also worked on. Again, now those, we can modify those. Those are just really a starting point for the wheel hubs. Remember, they're hubs that have bearings inside of them. And then, of course, the handlebar risers. So when we go to incorporate the forks into the frame design and the overall design of our vehicle, there's a couple things you need to pay attention to. One of those is the rake angle. So that's the angle that the steering head the steering head that you're going to design that's going to be mounted to the frame, the angle that that steering head makes with the vertical. And that angle is really important as to how the vehicle is going to perform. Now here's kind of, a, you can use this as an example. Obviously, we're not building Harley-Davidson's, but uh, the rake angle on Harley-Davidson Harley touring models is 26 degrees. So you can see on this diagram. And those kind of vehicles are nice for cruising on the highway. They handle really well. They're not designed for racing or anything like that. But it's a good general purpose 
kind of idea for the design. Now yours doesn't have to be exactly 26 degrees, but you need to pay attention to that, and that's good information to know. So the greater the rank, rake angle, the more stable the vehicle would be at high speed. So if you went to a 30 or 35 degrees, it's going to be stable at high speeds. But if it gets too steep, it's going to be uh, at low speed, it'd be very difficult to ride, and you can have some dangerous side effects from too steep of an angle. Think about some of those crazy chopper motorcycles with big, long forks. They're very unstable at low speed, and also they're very difficult to turn. So that's an important number to know. Now another thing I want you to look at, and this goes right along with that rake angle that we just talked about, is something called the trail. The trail is a distance that you get if you take if you drop a line. From the center of the front axle, if you drop a line straight down from there, and then you draw a line that goes follows the center line of your forks all the way down to the ground, that distance between at the bottom, so think about where it touches the road, that's going to give you your trail value. And normal trail is somewhere between three and six inches, and that's what you're going to be shooting for. So that rake angle is going to determine the trail. That gives you a good uh, all-purpose kind of handling and behavior. Now, if you have too little of trail, so something less than three inches, it's going to be very dangerous at high speeds. You can get something that's called a death wobble if it's less than three inches. If there's too much trail, so more than six inches, again, think about like a chopper motorcycle. It's going to be really clumsy and sluggish, especially at low speeds. So we're looking for something, again, between three and six inches. And it's very easy for you to determine once you have your forks built. And that's going to be part of this assignment. So I just want to spell out what I'm, my expectations for this next assignment. So what I want you to do is create 3D models of the fork components. So use whatever information you can find, and that'll be whatever I give you, and then whatever kind of research you might be able to find. Uh, I don't have, other than what I've given you on Blackboard, I don't have really other in, any information to give you about the forks. So um, just use a kind of approximate values if you get stuck that you think are reasonable considering the other dimensions on the parts. That's what I would tell you. You will need to design a new triple tree top and bottom bracket. They could be the same piece. You just shift two of them. Use the existing triple tree, but you're going to have to widen them to match the size of the front tire. Then I want you to create a sub-assembly that's got all those pieces on it. Take that sub-assembly, put it on a drawing, and add balloons and parts list for that. So that's the deliverable there. There's two things. One is that sub-assembly drawing of the forks. Then I want you to create a drawing that shows the rake angle and the trail you'll be using for your design. So take your forks, put them on a drawing sheet, and rotate them in an angle that you are going to aim for when you build your frame. And that's going to be important for the next step. When you build your frame, you can determine that head tube angle up front so there won't be any surprises. So uh, follow the guidelines that we talked about for rake and trail. And make sure you call those out on your drawing the rake and trail, and you can look at, I'll have an example that I'll post that you can look at. 